Hello there and welcome. In the previous episode we added water into our game, so now we have this small lake that we can basically just look at, and in the next episodes we're going to add more and more functionalities that are related to water. In this episode we're going to be able to actually swim and dive in this lake, and in the next episode we're going to add even more things. Now, because our lake is rather shallow, the swimming is not going to be effective because we're simply going to walk on the ground and we need some height, some depth to this lake to be able to actually swim. For this we're going to create another lake that will be a bit deeper. So if I move a bit over here, we can see that I have prepared this area for the new lake. And you can also see that it's a bit higher than the land that we had over here. And that's just because I want to make the lake deeper. As I explained in the previous episode, if you want something to be deeper, you need to also have some kind of height to your terrain because you cannot go lower than zero. So we're going to click over here and I set it to be the height of 20 and now I can go to zero so it will be much deeper. So first of all I'm going to change it, of course we're using set height, I'm going to change it to 10 and then I'm just going to draw some kind of area over here and then I want to make it even deeper so I'm going to make it 5 and then I can even make it zero so it will be even deeper. So now we have this lake and I'm also going to smooth the edges so I'm going to select smooth height and I'm just going to make it a bit smoother and now we can start adding water the same way we did over here and because the lake is actually deeper we're going to be able to swim inside because we're not going to touch the ground as soon as we enter into the lake. So we need to simply take this water source and copy it and place it over here. So we can simply select our water volume, control D to duplicate it, and then we're going to move it. But because the Y is a bit smaller, it's not going to actually fill up this entire lake. So in this case, we do need to increase the Y as well. And make sure that it goes all the way to the bottom. So let's just adjust it and of course over here we can see that the water just goes out of these hills so of course you're going to have to deal with that when you design your level. I can simply go over here, set height and increase it to 20 and this width will not be visible and now we have this lake that is actually quite deep and soon I'm going to run the game and we're going to see how it looks underwater. But the first thing we want to do is just be able to go into the water and swim. Now there's nothing that prevents us from going underwater, it's just some kind of empty cube so we can basically just jump inside but what will happen is that we're simply going to walk on the ground like there is no water. But we do want to have some kind of effect of swimming, of floating, of sinking, and that's what we're going to do in this episode. So before we run the game, let's just rename this to be Deep Lake, so we won't get confused. And on this lake we're going to add a new script, so over here we're going to name it something like Swimmable Area or Swim Area. So inside this swim area script we're basically going to create a simple on trigger enter and on trigger exit. And then when it's going to detect the player it's going to reach into the player movement script and change the movement. So we created a simple on trigger enter and on trigger exit. So if the player is the object that is entering into this area, we're going to reach into the player movement script and we're going to set this boolean is swimming to be true. And when we exit this area, we're going to do the opposite, we're going to set it to be false. Now of course we still don't have this boolean, so we're simply going to show potential fixes 
and generate field. So it's going to create this boolean inside of the player movement script. So now inside the player movement script, we can find this is swimming boolean created. So let's just create an area for the swimming. And let's also make it public for now. Maybe we don't need to, but it's good to have it public so we can see it inside the inspector. Now let's add a few more fields to control the swimming of the player. So first of all, we're going to have a public float swimming gravity. And this will be about negative 0.5. So remember, we had this regular gravity that is minus 9.8 but this will be a bit lower, so we're going to have less gravity underwater. Then we want to be able to switch between both of these gravities. So we're going to also create a walking gravity. And this will basically be the gravity that we had before. And the regular gravity will just become an empty field that is going to get either this value or this value. And now we can change between both of them at the beginning of the movement method. So we simply check if is swimming, then the gravity is the swimming gravity. But else, so if we're not swimming, then the gravity is the walking gravity. And now before we test this out, we're going to move our player closer to the deeper lake so we don't have to walk all of this. So we simply take the player and we move him a bit. Now the last thing that we need to do is add a box collider on the deep lake, otherwise the on trigger is not going to work. So we're simply going to add a box collider and of course we're going to make it is trigger. And at the moment, it's just going to take the shape of this entire water volume. You can also click over here and see that it's exactly taking the shape of the water volume. But of course, if for some reason you want to make it bigger, you can simply drag this and then it will detect the player even before he enters into the actual water. So now when we run the game, we can jump into the water and we can see that we are not walking on the floor, there is still this sinking effect and that's just because our gravity is not zero, but 0 0.5. So we have a small gravity that will make the player sink. Of course, you can get rid of this, but if we look up and we just press forward, we're going to get out of the water. Now, this can be a bit annoying, especially if you don't like to struggle to stay on top of the water. So we're going to deal with this in a second. So when we reach the top of the water, we're going to basically stay there. And of course, when we go out of the water, then this gravity is not working anymore and we can just walk on the ground. But if we go back, then we can swim, we can explore. So inside the player movement script, we're also going to differentiate between when we're swimming and when we're underwater because we can be swimming but we can also be underwater and we can be not underwater so we're going to add this boolean over here and now we can simply check if the player is underwater then we're going to give him this swimming gravity so he can sink. Else, we're just going to disable the descent of the player. And we're going to do this by simply using the Y value of the velocity. Because remember, we're controlling the movement of the player using this velocity. So when we jump, we want to increase the velocity so it will fall back down on the ground. So we're simply going to take the velocity y and make it zero so as long as he's swimming but he's not underwater it means that he's above the water we're going to be able to just stay there without sinking now of course this boolean by itself is not going to help us because we still need to set it to be true or false 
and the way we're going to set it is by knowing if the player is underwater or above water. And the way we can easily do this is by simply taking our player and use the main camera to detect if we're underwater or not. And the reason for this is because the main camera is basically our eyes or the head of the player. So simply by checking if the camera is underwater, we can know if the player is underwater. And in order to make it work, we need to create a rigid body and a box collider on the main camera in order to be detected inside the on trigger event. So we're simply going to add a box collider and we're going to make a trigger and we're also going to add a rigid body. We need to disable the gravity so the camera doesn't move and we're also going to make it kinematic again so the camera will be in its place without moving and we also want to freeze all of these rotations. And then we can also disable the mass so let's make it zero, although without gravity it's not going to even work. Now that we have both of these, we're going to be able to detect the camera in this on trigger event. And of course, make sure that you have the main camera tag, although it's something that comes with the main camera as default. So inside the swim area script, we're going to check for another trigger. And we're simply going to copy all of this. And then we're going to check if the object that entered into the water is the main camera. Then we're also going to set is underwater to be true. And we're going to do the same thing for the exit. So if it's the main camera, then we're going to set the underwater is underwater to be false. Now at this point it's not going to work just because of the way we're trying to reach back into the player. Because over here we check if the other is the main camera and then we try to use the same other to reach the player, but this other is the camera, not the player. So we need to say get component in parent. So get component in parent. In this way, it will take the camera, but it will look for the component inside the parent of the camera, which is the player, because the player movement script is on the player and not on the camera. And the same way, we're going to use it over here, get component in parent. So now I'm just going to unmaximize the screen so we can see what happens on the player and if it's actually underwater or swimming. So now I'm just going to run the game. And at this moment, we're just moving, we're not swimming and we're not underwater. And look at this part over here. So now when I enter into the water, it knows that I'm swimming, but I'm still not underwater because the camera, which is the head, is not underwater. But then when I go underwater, we're also swimming and we're also underwater. So now we can just reach the surface and now we're going to stay up here because we are swimming, but we're not underwater. And this way we're not going to sink. So of course you can add sounds, you can add some kind of wave or splash animation. So when the player moves, it will actually feel like he's swimming. So. Imagine there are seaweeds over here and fish and maybe a treasure chest and maybe we're going to add some of this later but again it's not something that you don't know how to do. We already discussed how to create a storage box so you can do the same thing for a treasure box. You can add seaweeds, you can add whatever you want. What is missing underwater right now is some kind of effect that will let the player know that he's actually underwater. So it will let him feel like he's underwater because at the moment we can see the sky but it still looks like this big hole, right? We don't really feel like we're underwater. So now if we swim to the top and we reach over here, there is really no difference. We, we just, this is underwater and this is above water. It looks exactly the same. So in order to create this effect, we're going to use post-processing. So we're going to create a new volume, global volume. Now at the moment, as a default, this effect is going to be applied in the entire scene. So anywhere we look, we're going to see this effect, but that's not what we want. We only want this to be applied underwater. So we're going to select the mode and we're going to change it to local. And this will allow us to create some kind of boundary for the effect. Then we're going to add a collider so we can actually create this boundary. We're going to use a box and we're going to use edit collider. And now we can see 
these boundaries over here. So now all you need to do is just make the size fit this exact area. So I'm going to play around with this. You can just use these arrows. So now that we set these boundaries, this is the area that the effect is going to take place. So only when we actually enter this area, we're going to see the post-processing. Now we can also rename this to be underwater effect. And now we can basically start adding the different post-processing that will change the way it looks. In order to see how it actually looks without always running the game, we can simply take the player and place him underwater. And then we can use the game window to actually see through the camera. And now we're going to see the changes in real time. Also, don't forget on the water effect to make the box collider trigger because otherwise it will just won't allow the player to enter into the water. Now, the first thing that we want to do is add a new profile over here and a new override. And this will basically allow us to choose different post-processing. So the first one will be channel mixer. So simply type in channel mixer. And over here, we're going to change the values a bit. So we're going to click on the red tab. We're going to enable the red color and we're going to change it to be about 20. Now, if at this point you don't see any changes, it means that you need to enable post-processing. So simply go to your player main camera and over here, allow post-processing and we still cannot see the changes. And it means that we have another camera. We have this equipable only camera. So also here we need to enable the post-processing. And now we can see this bluish hue on the screen. So it means that we actually see the post-processing. Now let's go back to the underwater effect and we're going to change the green color next. So simply click on the green tab and enable the green color and make it something like 80. Next, we're going to add another override and this will be lift gamma gain. And over here, we're going to enable all of them and we're going to move the slider a bit to the bluish color. And you can see that everything is changing in the camera view. So again, you can play around with this. This is just my example. Next, we also want to add some kind of blur in the background because obviously underwater our eyesight is not good as when we're outside of water so let's add depth of field and we're going to enable this and we're going to set it to be bokeh mode so over here we're going to set it to be about two and you can see that we already see this blur then we're going to enable the focal length to be 50 and the aperture we're going to set it at about 5.3 and it may look a bit blurry, but if we go closer and we actually run the game, we can see that if we are two units away from something, we're going to be able to see it clearly. But if we're further away, we're not going to be able to see it. So you can play around with this. Next, we're going to add another effect that will give us even more feeling like we're underwater. So we're going to use something named Vignette. I don't know if I pronounce it correctly. And we're going to change it to be this black color and over here we're going to change the intensity to be about 0 0.4 and you can see that the border is now a bit darker and for the smoothness we can change it to be maybe 0 0.3 now we're going to add the last effect and this will be film grain so we're going to find film grain we're going to enable it and use the medium three option of course you can play around with this and we're going to use the intensity to be about 0 0.25 and we can see this film grain and again this will give some kind of impaired vision effect because underwater we're not seeing clearly as outside of the water and now when we have all of them all we need to do is take our player outside of the water and place them back over here. And now when we run the game, we should be able to see this change in effects when we enter underwater. So over here, everything looks nice, but when we go underwater, we get this blurry effect. And again, imagine fish and seaweed and rocks and things like that. 
And you can even look at the sky and know that you are, are underwater at this point. And only when you swim over here and get to the top, now you're outside of the water. Now again, we can make it even better, especially if your game is focused on swimming and there's a lot of swimming in your game. For example, when we exit the water, we can have some kind of effect of water running on the camera and all of this will add to the game feel. So thank you for watching. That's all for this episode. If you're not subscribed, please subscribe. Also leave a like. It will help me a lot with the algorithm. So I'll see you next time.